In Chinese culture, the tiger is considered the king of all beasts, representing yin energy, courage, and the ability to drive away evil spirits. Chinese folklore venerates the tiger for its strength and protective qualities, believed to ward off the three main household disasters, fire, thieves, and evil spirits. Paintings of tigers are used as protective charms, and children often wear tiger-headed caps for protection. During the Chinese New Year and the Year of the Tiger, tiger images are especially prevalent. The tiger is also an important figure in Chinese art, music, and even in traditional medicine. In Korean culture, especially during the Joseon dynasty, tigers were often depicted in New Year's paintings as talismans against evil forces. They were revered as creatures that controlled human fate and guarded space and time. Tiger motifs were also popular in Japanese art, particularly during the Muromachi period, influenced by Chinese art and Zen Buddhism. Tiger paintings in Zen temples and among the samurai class symbolized military might. In later periods, Tiger motifs were also prevalent in ukiyo-e prints, often tied to epic tales of Japanese feudal lords. But in this video, we will take a closer focus on the cultural significance of tigers in India, a story a bit more nuanced than that of tigers in East Asian countries, one that is defined inter alia by colonialism. The tiger is India's national animal. In Hindu mythology, the tiger is closely associated with several deities. Most notably, it is the Vahana, or vehicle, of goddess Durga. The image of Durga riding a tiger is common in Hindu iconography, particularly during the Durga Puja festival, which celebrates her believed victories over what Hindus believe to be demonic forces. In various Indian tribal cultures, it often assumes a protective role. For instance, the Bariyas of central India worship Bagashur, meaning the tiger god. The Wali tribe of Maharashtra venerates the tiger as a symbol of fertility and good harvest. In the Sundarbans, the goddess Bonobibi, who rides a tiger, is worshipped by Hindus and is even part of the beliefs of local Muslims who view her as a protector. In Vedic texts such as the Yajur Veda and Atharva Veda, references to tigers are found often in the context of prayers for protection from tigers or ascribing the qualities and power of tigers to gods. The tiger in these texts is a symbol of majesty fearlessness and strength, but also represents aggression and violence. Shiva, one of the principal Hindu deities, is often depicted wearing tiger skin, for example, but tigers were also occasionally hunted. During the pre-colonial era in India, their hunting was a ritualistic activity reserved primarily for the noble elite, especially of the Mughal Empire. Tigers were generally only hunted by village populations if they attacked humans or if they threatened villagers. This cautious approach towards tigers helped maintain a balance between human and tiger populations, with less human-tiger conflict occurring due to the availability of habitat and prey for the tigers away from human habitat. This is useful to keep in mind because the arrival of British colonial rule significantly altered this dynamic. British colonists, since they didn't have a similar cultural sensitivity to tigers as various Indian groups, led to mass hunting and timber felling, which dramatically reduced the tigers' habitat and prey, forcing them into closer contact and conflict with human populations. This period saw a notable increase in man-eating incidents, especially in the northwest region of India, where such occurrences had previously been rare. Consequently, between 1875 and 1925, over 80,000 tigers were hunted, a number that might only be a fraction of the actual total due to instances of tiger hunting that were not documented. So this period saw tigers being hunted not just for sport by the British colonists, but also because they were considered a threat in some regions, with government bounties provided for their extermination. The pressure on tigers exercised by hunters led to the death of 33,247 people in British India by tiger attacks. Despite this, many rural communities, such as the Tharu community in the Himalayan foothills, continued to revere tigers as guardians of the forests. But this was not the case in all of India, with more people beginning to view tigers as threats rather than protectors or creatures of great spiritual importance because increased hunting during the colonial era made these tigers attack human habitats as they were being pushed out of their natural ones. The British colonial attitude towards tigers was markedly different from the traditional Indian view. Tiger hunts have long stood as symbols of the British Empire's power in India, epitomized in tales like Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book, written in 1894. But as the years went by, hunting tigers was almost turned into a touristic activity, with manuals on how to hunt tigers being published for those seeking to partake in it. Soon enough, even Hollywood became involved in this activity that was popularized in the West by these tales, with movies such as Between Savage and Tiger, made in 1914, which was a six-part series by George Klein Attractions that combined tiger hunts with a complex love triangle. 
By the time British colonialism ended in India, tiger populations continued to shrink. This was perhaps one of the most immediate effects of British colonialism on Indian culture, the desacralization of tigers and the association of tiger hunting with British high culture itself. The situation began to change with the efforts of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, who took significant steps towards wildlife conservation. In 1971, the Indian government outlawed hunting, and in 1972, Gandhi promulgated the Wildlife Protection Act, leading to the creation of 29 tiger reserves. This was part of the Project Tiger Initiative, which was considered the world's most comprehensive tiger conservation program at the time. This project led to a significant increase in tiger numbers. From an estimated 1,827 tigers in 1972, the population grew to about 4,000 by 1984. But issues like poaching, particularly for the traditional Chinese medicine trade, continued to pose threats to the tiger population. Despite significant investments in conservation, by 2008, a more accurate count revealed only 1,411 adult tigers in India. This led to the creation of the National Tiger Conservation Authority and a renewed focus on protecting these animals. As of recent counts, there are now 45 tiger reserves in India, covering about 1% of the country's land area.